Welcome to this pro special program in the Our Finger Lakes History series. I am Seneca County historian Walter Gable, speaking to you about in this brief program to mark the 20th anniversary of 9-11, one of the worst tragedies in United States history. Memories of the events of 9-11-2001 are probably engraved in our minds with our remembering those of us that are not young, remembering where we were and what we were doing when we first heard of the events unfolding. Many of you were probably right here in the Finger Lakes region at the time of this tragedy. I was in Monterey, California, doing consulting work for the New York State Education Department. Here you see some basic facts about the events of 9-11 and how it has come to be Patriot Day and a National Day of Service and Remembrance. The events of 9-11 were planned and coordinated. They were coordinated, planned terrorist attacks. Osama bin Laden admitted his responsibility for these terrorist attacks. Two commercial flight jets struck the two towers of the World Trade Center. One jet struck the Pentagon near Washington, D.C. One jet crashed at Shanksville, Pennsylvania and didn't reach its intended target in Washington, D.C. To begin, American Airlines Flight 11 struck the North Tower of the World Trade Center at 8.46 a.m. that Tuesday morning. United Airlines Flight 175 struck the South Tower at 9.03 a.m. The two towers collapsed. Here you see where the jets struck each tower. Almost all of the visuals I am showing in this presentation have come from the internet. These pictures depict the aircraft, an aircraft striking one of the towers. Nearly 3,000 people lost their lives in the destruction of the two towers of the World Trade Center. People who worked there in those towers, as well as firefighters, police officers, and so on. The estimate of damage in the loss of these two towers was over $60 billion. I'm letting several pictures in this program speak for themselves. Here you see a before and after views of lower Manhattan with and without the World Trade Center towers. These visuals suggest some of the tremendous emotional impact that this tragedy caused. Of course, also there were serious physical impacts that in some cases took a few years to cause deaths. This is a view of ground zero as it became known. Out of the ashes of the towers of the World Trade Center, 
A new high-rise called the Freedom Tower has been constructed and opened. It is no small coincidence that this tower is 1,776 feet tall. The 9-11 Museum opened in 2014. It preserves artifacts from the day of the attacks as well as items related to 9-11. The museum sits on the north end of the World Trade Center Plaza, adjacent to the reflecting pools of the memorial. This is an aerial view of the large open air memorial plaza and its two waterfalls. Shifting to United Airlines Flight 93, which was taken over by terrorists who diverted its flight route, presumably to attack some site in Washington, D.C. Perhaps the White House? Perhaps the U.S. Capitol building? Passengers on board the flight plotted to overtake the terrorists to prevent the jet from reaching the intended target that they had. On the signal phrase, let's roll, at 9.57 a.m., the passengers began to overtake the terrorists. The jet crashed near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, the crash site about two miles north of Shanksville and 60 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. This is the hole in the ground of the created by the crash. This is another view of the crash site. Still another views. Both of the plane's recorders, the so-called black boxes, which are actually orange in color, were found in the crash site crater. The flight data recorder was recovered on Thursday, September 13, 2001 at 4.20 p.m at a depth of 15 feet in the ground. On September 14th at 8.30 p.m., the cockpit voice recorder was found at a depth of 25 feet. Both were turned over to the National Transportation Safety Board for analysis. Let me add that none of the flight, none of the black boxes from Flight 11 and Flight 175 were recovered in the rubble of the World Trade Center. At the Pentagon, only the flight data recorder from Flight 77 yielded information. Events nearby the crash site in Shanksville soon became a memorial. The site of the crash of Flight 93 on September 11, 2001 has been transformed into the Flight 93 National Memorial at Shanksville, Pennsylvania. On September 24, 2002, Public Law 107-226, commonly known as the Flight 93 National Memorial Act, excluded the four hijackers from being memorialized, with the site being listed on the National Register of Historic Places. 275 acres of land were acquired for this memorial. A concrete and glass visitor center opened September 10, 2015, situated on a hill overlooking the crash site and the white marble Wall of Honor. This map shows the main features of the Flight 93 National Memorial and how some of the main features of this memorial line up with the actual flight path of Flight 93 on September 11, 2001. The most prominent features have been constructed in the grassy field encircling the crash site. The visitor center deliberately was built in line with the flight path. 
The curving walkway and 40 memorial groves circle around the bowl and wind down through the wetlands. The memorial plaza at the crash site has been built along the edge of the crash site. At the far end of the plaza, visitors can walk the flight path, reading the names of the passengers and crew engraved on eight foot high wall, high white marble panels called the Wall of Honor. This shows the memorial there. This memorial stone carries the phrase, let's roll. Also this, two other views. The Tower of Voices there is conceived as a monumental, not coincidentally, 93 foot tall, musical instrument holding, not coincidentally, 40 wind chimes, representing the 40 passengers and crew members. The intent is to create a set of 40 tones that can connote through consonants the serenity and nobility of the site, while also through dissonance recalling the event that consecrated the site. Another aircraft, American Airlines Flight 77, crashed into a section of the Pentagon just north across, excuse me, just across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. The hijacked American Airlines Flight 77 slammed into this section of the Pentagon at 530 miles per hour carrying approximately 10,000 gallons of jet fuel. All 64 aboard the aircraft were killed, as well as 125 people working in the destroyed portion of the Pentagon building. This picture gives you a view showing really how close the Pentagon is to the U.S. Capitol in the upper right, the Washington Monument near upper left, and the barely visible in the extreme upper left, the White House. Just envision if you were working in one of those offices even near to this actual crash area. The Phoenix Project was the name given to the project to repair the damage done to the Pentagon caused when American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the building as part of the September 11, 2001 attacks. The Phoenix Project goal was to reoccupy the outermost ring of the rebuilt section of the Pentagon by one year later and September 11, 2002. The first E-ring tenants returned to their offices in that outer ring 28 days before the September 11, 2002 goal. The final Wedge 1 tenants moved back into their offices in February 2003. Congress has voted to allow the U.S. President to designate 9-11 as Patriot Day. And President George W. Bush did so. 
Then in 2009, President Obama designated September 11th as Patriot Day and a national day of service and remembrance. This is the first of a few images to help us reflect upon the events of 9-11 and what it means for that date each year to be Patriot Day and National Day of Service and Remembrance. Before advancing to the very last frame in this 9-11 memorial program, I want to acknowledge and thank all the people and organizations who have filled the internet with the many visuals that I have used in this program. I trust that we will not forget Although nearly a whole new generation has been born since 2001. I hope that this special program in the Our Finger Lakes History Series has enhanced your knowledge of the tragic events of 9-11-2001 and will motivate you to want to do something to help others as part of this National Day of Service and Remembrance. It could be something as minor as just checking in on an elderly neighbor, or it could be much more.